Hi everyone, thanks for joining the Twitter space. Uh, can the speakers uh, accept your invite? Right? Let's just give a couple more minutes uh, waiting for all the speakers to join. Awesome. Um, Sarah, do you want to take over? Sure. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining, everybody, uh, wherever you are. Good morning and good evening. I'm Sarah, aka JK Remote, uh, your host today. And today we're back with Hack Series at Spotlight Web3. Uh, Spotlight of Web3 is a weekly podcast hosted by Huobi Incubator, the incubation arm of Huobi Global. Uh, with Web3 gathering more momentum than ever around the world, we are putting the most profound Web3 businesses under the spotlight for their lessons and stories. This episode is part of hashtag special hack series, Twitter class for our infamous momentum hackathon centering around DeFi. In the following episodes, we're covering NFT, Web3, and dev-related topics to provide lessons and tips for newly arrived developers at IFMAS. We can't skip a brief introduction about Hobie Incubator as well, right? Hobie Incubator is a project incubation arm of Hobie Group, positioned as a pro professional investment incubator, integrating industrial research, investment fund, incubation, and acceleration. We're committed to help the next generation of blockchain entrepreneurs and technical teams to grow at a higher speed. Now let's dive into today's episode. Today we've invited Flemmy, researcher at Dodo, Chloe, co-founder of CFG Labs, Josh Lee, co-founder of Osmosis. Unfortunately, Pranith from Ethereum Ventures couldn't join us, but thank you and welcome for uh, all three of you to joining us today. Welcome. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. Um, all right. I would like to uh, ask one of you to uh, introduce yourself and your company, your projects. Uh, if you are also DeFi DeGens, make sure to mention that, of course. We'll follow your Twitter. Uh, maybe start with Josh. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, very well. Awesome. Uh... Hello everyone, my name is Josh Lee. I'm the co-founder of Osmosis. And Osmosis is currently the largest uh, AMM decentralized exchange on Cosmos. And we are building 
uh, we're aiming to build basically the largest interchain DEX and, um, you know, solving a lot of the issues with uh, multi-chain UX, interchain interactions, and um, yeah, and, and you know, we're also we also have a, a Cosm Wasm platform that's on top of Osmosis that um, application developers can deploy their DApps on. Uh, and yeah, um, it's a pleasure to be here. Awesome, welcome. Uh, next step is Chloe. Hello, Chloe. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, JK. So, uh, this is Chloe. So, I'm. Um, uh, thanks, uh, Joseph. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, I'm the founder of C CFG Labs. So, CFG is uh, focusing on building the best developer community for all Cosmos in Asia. You know, we have been luckily, uh, you know, got granted by Osmos Open Grants. So, we're right now the only Asian entity got the, you know, the, the Open Grants so far. So we have like over 700 subscribers right now and 300 uh, active developers in our community. We are actually looking for very high level, you know, like players, high level skill developers, content creators, you know, like builders, developers, you know, with high cognition to join us. So um, we actually have a deep dive research paper every day, uh, every week. We have office hour. We have been writing topics about, you know, like very like technical driven topics such as MEV, RAFs, like move language, etc. So um, our, you know, final, our end game is like to be the first social benefits, you know, like protocol uh, in the space. And uh, we also think, you know, it's a very good, like, you know, game project to start with. We have a solid team. We have the best people. So everything is working very well. Um, for the DeFi part, yeah, um, you know, um, we have been, you know, like uh, closely monitoring like the evolution of DeFi back to things like 2016. So when at that time, when people like called fintech, like tech thing in Web2 area. So there was like payday loan, P2P or something like that. So um, then, you know, we have been like see, you know, the DeFi, you know, like in the Web3 area. So um, very interesting to talk about that in detail with all the guests today here. And thanks for the invitation from Huobi Labs. It's going to be an amazing time for all of you. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for your introduction. Um, and Flamey. Hi, Flamey. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Very well. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Flamey, um, uh, the uh, research analyst from Dodo, a multi-chain trading protocol for Web3, powered by proactive market-making algorithm. I'm sorry, uh, Dane cannot show up here, and I'm so honored to speak here. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for joining anyways. Okay, uh, let's dive into our talk. Let's talk a little bit about uh, general trends and overview of DeFi before we dive into any specifics. Um, can you guys share a little bit of your um, the trends that you see these days in DeFi, Josh? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I think obviously, you know, uh, the market situation is a little bit quieter than it used to be before, but uh, at the same time, I think it is the best time to build in, in times like these. Uh, in terms of DeFi trends, uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of um, work in optimizing TVL uh, to the, like to the volume. So you know, obviously, everyone's just been questioning. It's like, all right, is TVL even a, a valuable metric anymore? Uh, what matters is volume. So you know, assuming you have the same amount of TVL, how do you maximize the potential volume that can come out of it? Uh, so yeah, innovations in the in the curve design and uh, how the trades are matched and, and and things like that. That's one area. And then um, I think there is a lot more room to just improve the uh, financialization aspect of uh, you know non fungible assets. I think um, even within the NFT space, there's a wide range of how non fungible a non fungible token is. And I know, I know that sounds like a, a wordplay, but you know. Uh, a PFP project with 10,000 uh, PFPs is, you know, semi-fungible, whereas, you know, one-of-one one art pieces might be completely non-fungible. And, and that's actually a good thing, right, where um, you can actually experiment with uh, different ways of valuating and trading these, uh, you know, uh, evaluating based on some of the semi-fungibility across uh, 
these uh, projects. And yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of that is here to stay. And, um, you know, uh, the, the we, we already have really solid DeFi infrastructure to um, build on top of. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that's just one area that I've personally been interested in. Totally agree. I think everybody would, um, in in one way or another, kind of trying to recover, but also at the same time know that this is the time to build. I'm happy that you brought that up. Um, Flamey, what about you? What do you think? Um, in, anything was interesting innovations these days on DeFi? Um, from my point of view, um, what fascinates me the most is the idea of building a capital market for you know, selling block space like a commodity. It's not a you know, block space, it's not a brand new terminology, but an abstraction of block production. I'm not going any deeper today, but the point is um, it allows uh, block space searchers like you and me um, to access the value of the uh, block space and in the meantime, allowing uh, block space producers like the miners or stake val validators to hedge their risks. Uh, I believe it it will be a, a you know good direction, especially Ethereum is changing from proof of work to proof of stake. You know the the uh, block space market would be you know totally different at that time. Yeah. All righty. Um, then Chloe. Please share anything important that you have seen in the market these days. Hello. So yeah, um, I want to share. Like, um, yes, I have actually a lot to share. So the first thing I want to share is about like the value capture, you know, for the uh, blue chip DeFi protocol. So everyone is knowing like DeFi, DeFi is very profitable, right? So from the like, traditional investment banking point of view, and it has very good like you know like profits and like good revenue part. It's, it has very good like you know, financial modeling. So um, we actually you know like seeing like during the bear market recently, many top protocols such as AV and you know like Uniswap are beginning to see the you know the value capture you know as a point. So um, like so also so for example, like Uniswap you know like take the majority part of like you know the gas fee like only during. So that's that's one thing. Also, we are beginning to see like some top protocols that you know are beginning to capture value through like margin strategy. So you need Uniswap, you know, um, and also like for example, Synthetics. Synthetic is building on like Optimism. So before that, he's just like you know like building on Ethereum. But after moving to Optimism, he has like see like you know like dramatic you know like user growth, or user traction. So I mean like you know Optimism reduce like you know transaction fee, trans transaction fee, and also like increases like a throughput. So it's very like user friendly from the user point of view. So um, I think you know it really, really like improves the value capture for synthetic, you know, with, uh, with uh, you know like migration like to the optimism. So that's the part. Uh, the second trend I want to mention is you know cosmification and movement of this this summer. So we have seen a lot of like L two and D A P P like is moving to uh, you know the A P P chain in Cosmos. Yeah, we are a big fan of Cosmos right now. Uh, and in the future, definitely. Uh, Compound and DYDX were, you know, the first one to eat the cakes. For example, like, uh, you know, Osmos, uh, you know, is also, you know, the, the, the fa my favorite project. So it has seen, you know, very good, like, uh, attraction. It was, like, very solid, you know, product and, you know, like, very good, like, community. So I was uh, ask, uh, uh, asking questions like, in the community. There are like three or four people, you know, like keep you know answering my question. So very, you know, and user friendly, uh, very good. So we have seen the rise of AVP chain, uh, definitely. Um, you know, like uh, uh, you know, building APP chain on Cosmos, you know, and provides like soaring validity, like flexibility, and like more like efficient resource pricing. Um, I mean, like in Ethereum, like, you know, like in the monolithic chain, you know, they are, everyone is like competing for the block space. Um, you know, for example, if there is a hype in demand, like in Uniswap, 
so the whole network is congested. So, which might cause like congestion and high gas fee for the whole network. So, for example, I'm the user of sushi store, sushi, uh, sushi store. I will also like get a high, higher, you know, you know, gas fees. But from you know e- economy point of view, it's not very efficient. And um, so, I, I believe you know, application specific blockchain enables what we like call you know warehousing of block space. So, um, if you view like a blockchain set as a supply chain. Then the block space on the various parts of the state are being, you know, bought by the application on the chain. It, you know, inhabits. So, which just means, you know, it pays for the gas as long as well as, you know, like different applications, you know, all like, you know, taking care of the same block space. So it's very like, you know, like congested and competitive and it drives fears up. So, um, yeah, the, the, that, that's not. You know, very like uh, user friendly. So, um, but you know, like for the application specific chain, you know, it's very it, it's it's better. It provides lots of you know flexibility. You know, like to control the fee, you know, that are paid by the user and give them the, you know the the ability to keep you know like at you know to uh, to keep the fee like constant. So, uh, I want to share an example with Osmos. So it allows for like um, easier subsidizing of fees for application, you know, that want to remove a spike in fee structures completely. For example, you know, one application, you know, like could subsidize the average fee for a certain period of time, you know, without having to worry about like fee spikes, you know, like due to the heavy congestion. And um, yeah, so I, I also like, you know, some, you know, example, for example, like uh, Kujira, uh, we are very closely about, very, very closely. They just, you know, moved from, you know, Terra, like to, um, to the, you know, to build the DeFi hub. They are actually uh, finished the migration just within one month, right, to the Cosmos APP chain. They're now ranked as the top 10 in the map of Zoom. So, um, like, um, Lido and Quicksilver, like, that's kind of, like, a uh, liquid staking protocol. It's very interesting. Uh, Crescent, I believe, you know, they are actually, like, you know, doing their liquid staking protocol. But Lido and Quicksilver, they, 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 you know, they choose to launch the consumer chain using, you know, like, interchain security, you know, by Cosmos Hub. Um, you know, but they are also like taking two different approaches, um, which I, we have already like wrote a lot of like articles and explanation for our, com- our community. So if you are interested, you can go to our website and mirror and like WeChat account to see every articles we, we have, uh, you know, put through. Uh, the third part I want to mention about uh, the MEV and the MEV would be the, uh, well, I'm expecting the MEV to be the most value capture part for the layer one. Uh, in the future. So right now, you know, like inflation, gas fees, you know, like takes part, the majority part of the, you know, like value. But um, I, I believe, you know, Sunny and from Osmos have, you know, like recently gave a lot of like insights for that part. They're actually talking about like internalizing a good MEV. So which means like, you know, how to, you know, make the MEV, you know, like accrue value to its, itself protocol rather than like third parties such as Flashball, like such as in the MEV ecosystem. How to, you know, like bring the value to the real users and to make it like more like, you know, like a fail, you know, game theory is very important. And also, you know, MEV is, you know, it's, you know, um, includes like bad MEV and good MEV. So we need to make sure, you know, we understand, you know, both. So yeah, that's, that's what I think. Thank you. Thank you. I think... You cover almost all the um, hot potatoes in the market. So thank you so much for that. We'll, we'll definitely tackle some of the uh, uh, news that you have mentioned. Um, but I would like to deep dive a little bit on the DeFi protocols. I mean, we, we have so many news every day. Uh, but Josh, um, Osmos is, is the most robust DeFi project in the Cosmos ecosystem. And you guys launch features like fluid staking. And that's very, very unique. Um, can you introduce to us a little bit um, about it and also Osmosis Zone um, and, and all that jazz? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let me just go ahead and start by kind of mentioning what makes Osmosis different from other DEXs that exist in the market and, and some of the emphasis that we're putting. And I think obviously number one is that we 
you know, from the ground up, we built with uh, blockchain interoperability and this uh, wider IBC slash interchain ecosystem in mind. So uh, making sure that, um, yeah, when, when, you know, we're not basically going to rely on um, different bridges and, and different bridges in their UIs to kind of uh, move assets around. Our goal is to basically to kind of have that as part of uh, the uh, DEX experience as much as possible and as seamless as possible. And then I think the second part that kind of really distinguishes Osmosis from other DEXs in the market is the fact that it is uh, an application-specific chain. And what I mean by that is, you know, the Osmosis blockchain uh, in itself is um, created for the Osmosis application. And when you're building as an app chain, I think you get to kind of approach the same questions and, you know, potential issues that you can resolve and, and find different ways to resolve it. And, and here, let me give a, you know, an example of something, right, where let's say for transaction fees um, because Osmosis is, is fundamentally an interchain uh, DEX, uh, the default currency, at least right now, typically people pay in Osmo for fees. But at the same time, you know, when someone moves an asset to Osmosis, they may not have uh, Osmo tokens to pay for fees. Uh, now, the way that we sort of could approach this where is where um, let's say, hey, um, because the block producers of Osmosis blockchain is aligned with the application use case, which is the Osmosis DEX itself, um, we basically get to figure out how do we solve the spam prevention mechanism from a different perspective that could be more of a win-win situation. Uh, so, for example, you know, if I'm swapping a hundred dollars worth of tokens and there is a little bit of swap fee that, you know, I have to pay as part of that swap transaction. And maybe, you know, to a certain degree, you could leverage some of those swap fees as a transaction fee because you are essentially an application specific chain. Now, this is something that you don't really get to have uh, the luxury of in, uh, in, you know, Ethereum, for example, uh, just because Uniswap thinks, hey, this person paid Let's say, I don't know, maybe they did a big transaction and they paid up to um, five dollars in, in swap fees. Um, fundamentally, you know, the application of Uniswap and the block producers of Ethereum aren't kind of aligned on a single application use case or, you know, the incentives are slightly different. Right. The miners are essentially there to maximize the transaction fee profits, whereas uh, Uniswap is trying to maximize the amount of volume that it processes uh, through uh, its DEX. And, and I think those two things can be different. Therefore, you do have to cater to both sides. Whereas once you are building as an application-specific blockchain, um, you know, the, the block producers or the validators of the application-specific chain uh, essentially are aligned with the fact that, hey, if the amount of volume that happens on this application goes up, that basically increases the value of the chain that I'm validating and producing blocks on. And, and that's a win-win situation. And, you know, that's just like one of the many examples, right? And you guys, you, you just mentioned super fluid staking where, you know, people are trying to figure out how do you do liquid staking for uh, different kinds of tokens and things like that. Um, and, you know, we've had in, in Ethereum, um, Lido is obviously the biggest one with, uh, Rocket Pool is also another, and you know, and then there's going to be centralized exchange, uh, liquid staking, and, and things like that. And we're gonna, you know, we are seeing a ton of, um, you know, interest in people in Cosmos trying to build liquid staking applications as well. But um, you know, because we are an application specific chain that's f primarily focused on Dex and, and exchanges, uh, you know, Osmosis was able to ship uh, something called super fluid staking where liquid staking is basically kind of built in to this um, DEX and, and liquidity providing application. So the, you know, the same Osmo token that you're providing liquidity with counts partially 
uh, as something that you have locked up uh, that secures the chain, which would be essentially impossible where in, in a world where, you know, like um, going back to the Uniswap and Ethereum example, in the world where the merge happens and you have a proof of stake Ethereum, your ETH that's sitting in a Uniswap LP pool won't count as uh, something that is staked uh, because, you know, those two can't be, uh, you can't slash LPs for um, something that happens at the block producer level. Now, this is something that you can do as an app chain. And, you know, these are just like some of the few examples that you can do with an app chain. Uh, and, and I think, you know, the possibilities moving forward are uh, incredibly endless. And, and I think that's the exciting part moving forward as well. I, I, I'm, I'm not really an expert in, in this uh, specific feature for sure, but from what is what is defined in in many different platforms liquid staking slash fluid staking is somewhat similar to um um uh actually in in mainnet uh, i maybe i forgot the name of it but was it a pancake swap um i think there was a there was a, um, a staking program that was in in a um uh, in well-known DEX uh, first generation of them to 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 basically tokenize your staking position, and I was wondering if if there is any specific uh, differentiator in in uh, Cosmos system or or even Osmosis. Yeah. So uh, in other ecosystems, uh, the way that liquid staking is typically done is you tokenize the staked position, and that's where you start with, right? So for example, in Solana, they have Marinade, and you stake through Marinade, and you get MSOL, which is essentially the liquid staking version so of Marinade. And then you're, you know, that value is somewhat, I wouldn't say pegged, but uh, closely follows the value of Sol because there is a way to arbitrage the value there. And you're, the expectation is you use the liquid staking token Solana for the DeFi, uh, whereas, you know, for Osmosis, we are a blockchain that is a DEX, right? So we can actually do this backwards where we don't have to create a generalized liquid staking Osmo. We can actually just uh, allow users to utilize the Osmo that's already sitting as part of a li like a LP pool to count as something that they are staking uh, for the protocol as well. And, and I think the differentiator here is do you start with tokenizing the liquid staking and and you can use that liquid staking token in DeFi, whereas Osmosis, it's like you have tokens sitting in um, DeFi that count as staking, you know, protocol level uh, staking, and you get uh, the, some of the rewards for that as well. So I think the order of how these things happen uh, is, is sort of reverse, right? So the early name for superfluid staking used to be called reverse staking derivatives because the order of how things happen is actually the reverse of typical staking derivatives. Right. I, I would definitely drop you a DM to, to help a little um, education uh, later on. But I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this up for, for now uh, and move on to uh, Flamey. Because, I mean, we... Trust me, it, it sounds like we're, we're dropping topics one by one, but it all comes down to the uh, discussion around the DeFi protocol, the development of it. And I, I believe Osmosis and Dodo and um, CFT Labs, they're all kind of in the, at the forefront of this development. So I would love to have Flamey this time to uh, talk a little bit about um, DEX, of course, and... Um, Flamey, we already have the Uniswap and, and Josh also mentioned um, and the likes, but Dodo has emerged as a strong performing DEX on the market. So what is the strategy here and uh, the competitiveness? Um, the, you know, broadly speaking, Dodo um, is offering the lowest fee for stablecoins trading the best liquidity for mainstream asset trading and the best service for long-term asset listings. And um, that three points are the, you know, main strategic strategy for Dodo. 
and speaking of our edges, you know, uh, Dodo is committed to providing the best trading experiences to all the users. Uh, for for by uh, traders, we have the best uh, trading prices thanks to our aggregator tech. Um, for the created providers and market makers, we have a uh, you know we have great uh, capital efficiency thanks to our proactive market making uh, algorithm. And also we have been developing, uh, you know, advanced features like limit order, uh, gasless trade, you know, like uh, privacy swaps uh, for uh, anti-MEV, you know, something like that. Uh, and, you know, we are expanding multi-chain. Uh, for now, we have been bringing our product to over, uh, you know, like 10 blockchains yeah so that that would be our uh, strategy and edge, edges all right then um as also uh, an expert and uh, uh, one of the members of of uh, dex uh communities um i would like you to kind of continue to uh share your insights on maybe some some of the uh, uh, issues that we had with um, with DeFi specifically on on DEXs. So, um, and I quote from from a, a crypto article today: most DEX protocols operate with passive liquidity provision and explicit AMM pricing curves, but it suffers from a number of drawbacks, including impermanent loss, poor capital efficiency, and high slippage. For ideation purpose. For, for our audience and hackers, which functionality and emerging solutions do you got? Do you uh, maybe starting with uh, Flamey for sure? Uh, that worth worth trying to build. I think you guys will be the best person to um, analyze this this as well. And and I think it these issues that I've mentioned have existed for a very long time. Um, yeah. So um, share your insight on on these. Okay, I will go first. Um, you know, besides uh, our PMM, I think you know there are a lot of new designs on top of AMM, like um, like Frag Swap, adopting time weighted average market making algorithm, um, which aims at helping you know traders executing large orders with minimum slippage and low gas fees without a negative way uh, affecting the price. Uh, and um, I think um, th th that order is, you know, broke, uh, broken down into uh, an infinite number of very small virtual orders and they are executed smoothly over time according to the, uh, you know, embedded constant, constant product AMM. And another uh, product uh, worth mentioning is the, I remember the crack swap. Uh, they are consolidating all liquidity pools, liquidity pools on the exchange into you know one single smart contract and representing individual pools as a you know lightweight data structures. Um, this architecture allows traders to you know execute um, multi-step, multi-pool transactions all within one, you know, small, single contract, netting the flows across all pools. Um, I think um, that, that, that would be, uh, you know, the two products that, uh, you know, would, would be worth trying. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank, and, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, it's hard mm -hmm. to say which one will, will upform. You know, but <laughs> yeah, obviously Uniswap V3 is now, you know, becoming the uh, real infrastructure for DeFi. Yeah, right. thank you. No problem. Uh, Chloe, what do you think? What kind of uh, solutions that you, you came across or, or you know that worth trying for, for DEX to solve these um, multiple issues? Okay, uh, so... Um... I actually have done, you know, like research, you know, like after terror 
you know, crash with the uh, uncertainty, you know, like the the very powerful, like, uh, you know, like on chain data, you know, um, you know, attraction, you know, to like uh, the, 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 the team is very solid on the data, on chain data analysis. Um, we found a lot of interesting things. So, um, so for example, uh, you know, after, you know, like tariff crash, like with price collapse of, you know, like both Terra and the like, uh, you know, like UST, we found like, uh, you know, a Uniswap with the performance of like uh, Uniswap V3 and also like Curve V2. We found like, you know, Curve actually got like actually higher you know, resilience, you know, like during the, you know, like extreme uh, black swan events. And um, while Uniswap, you know, especially like v- V3 is actually having problem, like such as, you know, like high slippage. And uh, also, you know, like for this concentrated liquidity, you know, the price you know, is out of scope. So which is, you know, very not good, like from the user point of view. So for, 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 my, for my point, it's like, you know, Uniswap, I believe, you know, it's more like a dominant, you know, AMM DAX for the general assets. While if for, you know, like for some packed assets, like stable coins, uh, I would definitely go for the Curve V2. Um, I also want to talk about something about like MEV. I'm, I'm a game theoretist, so I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And, you know, like flashboards has been, you know, extremely powerful, like for, you know, like the off-chain, you know, off-chain parts. And I'm really, I um, recently like listened to some, you know, Sunny's inputs about like the, you know, recent like uh, innovation on the uh, MEV strategy. Uh, the one part is very interesting. It's about like um, on-chain flashboards. So, um, so firstly, I, I want to continue my previous discussion about, you know, what's the bad MEV and what's the good MEV. So uh, the good MEV is, you know, like, you know, it, it might be like for, you know, liquidation boards, uh, like for some, you know, on-chain arbitrage, or maybe we can do some, you know, cross-domain arbitrage, etc. cetera. Um, for the bad MEV, it's definitely, you know, like a value, uh, you know, extraction from the whole ecosystem from the user point of view. So it's not good and it's not, you know, encouraged. For example, it's like, you know, sandwich attacks. You know, like generalized you know, front running, which is like proposal, like use their like rights, you know, to reorder, you know, the transaction and to, you know, like, you know, to extract value from the system. Also, you know, we can have, you know, some auction front running and, you know, it's like, you know, like some you know, related to some, you know, price, you know, first price auction or same price auctions, uh, you know, mechanical design stuff, you know, economy. And um, also like censorship, you know, right, you know, if there is some parties, you know, like collude, like validate the collude, and, you know, they will actually try to, you know, validate, you know, the transaction, which is not actually valid. Um, so for the flash pro- uh, for the, uh, um, almost like, uh, recently, like, you know, like, um, proposed of like on-chain, you know, flash system, um, there are like very interesting part, for example, um, uh, in traditional flashboard system, um, the off-chain transactions you, you normally you know pri- uh, prioritize you know the system. So, for example, like the searches, you, you know, they will like produce bundles and you, you know they send them to the flashboards. So the bundles normally include you know like transaction prioritization and you know don't pay the transaction fees. You know it fails. You know like they always like you know separate auction you know for getting transaction into block. And, you know, also, like, you know, getting the transaction to the first few slots in a block. So, uh, Osmos is trying to, you know, like, build this all, all, uh, all the sorts of stuff, you know, on-chain. So, in that order, like, you know, the transaction don't have to be, you know, executed in order, you know, like, the proposals you include in the block. So, which means they don't have, you know, the permission, they don't have the rights to conclude, and maybe, like, to do, like, some, you know, um, from running stuff. Also, you know, by building some, you know, like on-chain flashboards, you know, they, you know, probably, you know, allow transaction, like, to bid for the first block, you know, in the blocks. And, you know, it provides, like, more fair, you know, like, game, you know, game theoretical and game design within the ecosystem, which is beneficial for all the people, other players in the, you know, in the ecosystem. And, you know, only if, you know, when when should they pay? 
So previously, you know, in Flashball, you know, there is a private uh, auction. For example, if someone, you know, like on the auction, you know, pay separately and directly through the Flashball, so maybe this pay separately, you know, to the to the miner. So there might be, you know, some um, green market transactions. But now, um, you know, if they win the uh, auction on chain, you know, uh, only if you they win the auction, then they they are allowed to pay the auction fees. And uh, yeah, and, and through that way, you know, as I said, you know, MEV, you know, will become a you know, very important part of, you know, like um, only, uh, you know, on, you know, value accrual for, you know, like some major L1 or maybe, maybe like some APP chain like Osmos. So um, I believe, you know, like some auction process, you know, will be, you know, distributed fairly across, you know, all like stakers, users. Not only like values, miners, you know, in, in like in Ethereum or other like monolithic chains, and uh, yeah, so that's it's interesting. I'm looking forward to see like more like on-chain auction part, of, um, you know, more you know transfer way like to to take some priority of like existing you know like uh, solutions. That is very interesting topic. I I I honestly think that. Uh, auction function. I mean, now currently it's just only called auction, but I think that that way of uh, interacting and, and proceeding the transaction is is underrated. Um, I maybe it's a little uh, outside of the, the original topic, but I have been looking at the announced DAO, the the NFT that they yeah. have been uh, launching, and it was so interesting. Yeah, big fan um, of nuns. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly, like, <laughs> conscious founder. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. Very okay. interesting. And it doesn't really feel like the, um, I don't know if, if anyone in the um, audience has a similar experience, but uh, the kind of image that we have around the auction, maybe in a gallery or even a, almost as a gambling, um, I think auction mechanism can be definitely uh, introduced to to um, this this um, deck system too, as a, as part of a decentralized um, transaction and, and order book, right? Um, then I would like to uh, talk a little bit about sad news, but also at the same time, like provide ourselves to learn a little bit. Um, so we have seen Nomad accident this week, um, and also um, including. Luna, uh, Chloe already mentioned, and to name a few, of course, and we we can't not talk about Free Arrow and uh, Celsius, and and it's even something that I I hear from um, traditional news media as well, like they cover now about crypto, uh, sadly about this <laughs> horrible news, uh, but I believe that um, a lot of ecosystem got a, took a hit. So, but it, it seems like something kind of hit in everybody's mind that uh, this is this is some sort of chance. Uh, this is the time that we we just take it as a turning point. Um, so, w- what is exactly that that we 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 think we got we got uh, affected, and how can we how can we solve in a way? Um, Chloe, would you like to continue on this talk? Yeah, for sure. So for the for the normal instant, right? So if if right. I, ex- right. I, I understand you right, thank you, GK. Yeah. So um, I think you know um, there is a problem, you know, with Evomus. I actually write previous write you know five deep dive article for Osmos, you know, talking about that. So the, the, the solution and I'm thinking about Evomus is like, you know, they actually, you only use like normal, you know, as a single canonical bridge. So this, you know, like brings a lot of like, you know, single point of failure, you know, like a risk. So, you know, like Accela, a graph bridge, you know, connects, you know, uh, you know, uh, and there are other like suit solutions. Um, so I believe, you know, a March and bridge strategy, you know, you know, it, it's definitely be- better. And like um, you know, um, of course, like um, uh, I, I, I want to take you know like Osmos example as well. So everyone, yeah, knows, go ahead. Like, there is a, yeah, there, there, there is like 
there was a propo- proposal, like you know, like choosing you know ERC twenty like bridge, like for for Osmos. You know, there are like some Accelera graph bridge, one whole nomad, nomad. You know, Accelera. You know, it bits bit, bit, bits and and then got uh, you know like get you know like winner. Um, I remember, you know, what, 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 uh, uh, you know, like Sunny and like other like community members talk about that. Why they like choose only one bridge at the beginning, because they are considered about like U.S. and like fragmentation of liquidity. So be- because you know, like for example, if I'm transfer money from you know like Acceler, like you know, to, like. Uh, through like Ethereum or like or, or maybe from from my Easter from Excel or, or like through Wormhole, right? They are actually two different assets. They are not fungible with each, uh, with each other. So since they are not like you know fungible, not like replaceable, so they don't have like you know they will have like different liquidity pools. So which means so you need know, have like, you know the fragmentation of liquidity. So this is a very like poor from the UX point of view. And also, like you know, there are lots of like um, I, I believe here, you know, lots of like pre pre how to say that, but like for example, you didn't have like WTH, so you can't use WTH again. So we see lots of like strange names, such as like like on Terra previously, there's like you know one whole wrap ETH, or like you know like some like very very compli- complicated, and, like very hard hard to tell. So through that way, you know, like, mm, you know, like th- 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 that's why I-, 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 I believe, you know, that's why, you know, some some protocol, you know, like choosing to use one bridge at the beginning. Um, but I believe, you know, it's, it's it, you know, there, there are, might, might be, you know, some, uh, other, you know, um, uh, in the bridge solutions, for example, uh, I want to talk about like uh, Ethereum, like uh, maybe, you know, we can use Accela. But if you know we, we want to you know like bridge through for example Bitcoin Nomic you know the so Nomic bridge is one like you know it's very interesting to uh, you know to see uh, they actually bringing I mean to bring like you know Bitcoin ecosystem to the to the cosmos and also for example like one hole is you know is so, although you know there might be some reputation race because you know they have you know got like found stolen you know some something like that. So which might be you know harmful for the like community, but it's still like you know, a good choice. You know if you want to you know, get you know assets from Solana. So um, yeah, so um, I think you know th- 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 that's the one part. Um, you know uh, whether you choose one bridge or like multi bridge strategy, and also I think you know there is some you know design uh, with uh, for the problem like for the nomad. Right now, it's I believe under was under like the minimal, um, you know, bridge, a minimal, uh, you know, wider like uh, a minimal like uh, party, you know, assumption, security assumption. So I have written an article about talking about that. Um, you know, trustless bridge, you know, from the uh, safety and security point of view, is definitely better than you know trust bridge. So, um, you know, that's why, you know, like, you know, IBC, you know, it's very uh, attractive, you know, like, you know, it's an interoperable standard for blockchain communication, it, you know, it's skew, it's permissionless, you know, general, like, general message, you know, passing. So, um, and also, like, uh, I, I believe, like, on Ethereum, like, ecosystem, you know, I hope, you know, it provides a good solution for, like, a wrap and, uh, you know, um, uh, there are some other, you know, uh, solutions as well. Um, so I see, um, you know, uh, like trusty bridge is maybe, you know, like the, you know, like um, I, I wouldn't say, you know, it's the end game. Uh, it's it's required and in, in the current stage, but uh, I believe, you know, with the innovation of technology and uh, more people realize you know, like the safety and the security you know, it's, it's very important for, for the user point of view. And uh, I think there might be a better solution. Also, uh, probably, like, you know, if you look at, like, the recent launch of, like, some protocols such as Move, uh, such as Sui and Aptos, you know, they are based on the Move. They're actually trying to, you know, use, like, the Move language itself. You know, it's very, you know, it's cute. And, you know, it's very, uh, you know, provides a lot of uh, super, like, scalability, you know, from the user point of view. So we need to look at, you know, like, the innovation in the space. Um, so, yeah, very interesting.
All right. Um, Josh, I would like to also ask you a similar question, but maybe focus on osmosis too. Um, is osmosis at all impacted? Um, because it was lost around like 9 million in this incident, the, the nomad. Um, and what, what is the lesson you think uh, we can learn from here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, um, yeah, I mean, you know, any type of hacks and, and things like that, you know, before we get into kind of the postmortem, uh, I think it is important that we are kind of sensitive to the people that lost money. Uh, and also, this also happened to have an exploit previously. Uh, luckily, the scope wasn't very large, but um, yeah, uh, first of all, you know, I would definitely say that um, IBC is the gold standard for uh, cross-chain token transfers. Uh, you can't get, you know, much better than that. That being said, I don't think, you know, it's the uh, right time to kind of dunk on Nomad or I've seen just like a lot of bad takes on Nomad where, you know, people are like, oh, this is why, you know, bridges are insecure and things like that. Uh, the thing was, you know, like most bridge hacks um, is not necessarily due to the architecture of the bridge itself, you know, in the same case as Nomad. Uh, whereas this time it was just a software mistake or, or smart contract issue. And um, yeah, and, and it wasn't the architecture of the bridge itself. And um, yeah, you know, and, and to be honest, this is going to be a very controversial take. But uh, I, I think, uh, you know, Solidity tends to be a very hard language uh, to implement bridges from what I understand. And um, yeah, and, and you know, when you're trying to kind of create this extremely complicated mechanism to um, move tokens around. It, it just happens that, you know, one small mistake can cost uh, uh, a lot of money. Uh, luckily for Osmosis, I think, you know, we weren't, um, we didn't, we weren't hugely impacted by uh, the Nomad Bridge hack. Uh, currently, most of the uh, USDC liquidity that exists on Osmosis uh, is bridge through the XLR bridge, which, um, yeah, uses a slightly different mechanism for um, bridging USDC. But, you know, in terms of the smart contract risk that exists, I think, you know, it's still uh, very much the same. And, um, yeah, and those are more fundamental issues that exist that uh, we need to uh, resolve uh, moving forward as well. And... Yeah, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd love for there to be um, direct IBC bridges to every chain in the world. Uh, but the reality is uh, that's not the case or, or that's, you know, not technically feasible for all chains right now. right? And uh, bridges are some compromises that you have to make. And that's the reality of it. And, you know, smart contract bugs uh, happen a lot. But um, I was talking to uh, my co-founder, Sonny, about this, and he had this interesting take where, um, you know, maybe we are seeing a lot of bridge hacks because um, bridges, is, you know, bridges tend to be where there is uh, a ton of money that's sitting around uh, where one small smart contract exploit could lead to a large sum of money uh, being taken out of a smart contract. Uh, outside of AMMs and some of these kind of uh, very slow-moving DeFi protocols that don't update as frequently, you know, bridges do tend to be uh, a smart contract where there is a massive sum of money that's sitting in one place uh, that is, you know, potentially uh, ready to be exploited. So uh, for us, you know, we are exploring many different ways of mitigating issues like this. Uh, I think one of the easiest ways we're going about this is um, creating a little bit of, you know, um, some type of like in protocol limit to how much tokens can be transferred at one given time. So, you know, if you have a hundred million sitting in a smart contract or, or, or this bridge and there happens to be, you know, where uh, 50 million transfer out of the smart contract, I feel like that's a very unlikely scenario where, you know, a bridge has $50 million uh, worth of tokens being transferred out in single transaction. That's something weird. And maybe there is some way where we can rate limit the amount of money that can leave the smart contract. So let's say, you know, um, you know, like $2 million, $5 million every 
you know, hour or something where uh, for, you know, the 99% of the time when the user is trying to move money, this won't cause any issue, but uh, this will give, you know, people more time to notice and, and fix issues where, um, you know, when money is being drained out, it won't be one single transaction that drain the entire smart contract. Uh, rather, you have a little bit more of a time to kind of come to consensus, reach, uh, be, able, be able to find uh, fixed vulnerabilities and, and things like that. And uh, I think that's kind of the one way that we are thinking about this. It, it, probably the simplest way to kind of prevent uh, the most common bridge hacks. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I, I couldn't agree more about the cross-chain reality on the uh, bridge. And I would like to wrap up this part uh, with uh, Flemmy. So being a DeFi protocol is, is honestly inevitable in multi-chain uh, slash cross-chain. Um, well, how does Dodo view this kind of issue and, and how important it is to having a secure and reliable cross-chain bridge uh, when choosing new blockchain to deploy? Um, yeah, actually, um, Dodo has always been prudent and selective regarding bridges deployment. You know, we only offer um, external link to bridge instead of building bridge to you know isolate risk so um we always you know choose and recommend all of your guys to use the uh, you know official bridge which which you know which is uh, recognized by the layer one and uh, yeah that uh, and you know from my person personal point of view i believe in you know ibc messaging uh will be you know better solution over, you know, all the existing, you know, bridges, even over layer zero. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, that is my you know, personally, um, you know, preference. If anybody in the audience disagree or agree, um, please tag me on this. I, I think it's very, um, um, yeah. It is a personal preference, but I, I believe that it has um, it has um, um, own meaning to it for sure. Thank you for sharing, Flemmy. Um, so it has been a, a around a, an, an hour, and and thank you so much, everybody, to uh, come and join this uh, this talk. I think um, as as everybody in the um, in the guest here that that shared about this uh, recent incident and and also I think it is very important that we know what we have done wrong uh, and also right and moving forward we know how to overcome our um, shortages and and improve that's that's probably the best way uh, that we can think of to uh, bring mass adoption to DeFi and Honestly, L1, L0, L2, uh, everyone in the space honestly have the same goal, uh, make the DeFi secure and, and innovative and, and sustainable. So I hope everybody enjoyed this, um, this special series for um, celebrating Ivmos, uh Hackathon. hackathon. Uh, thank you so much for joining everyone. Uh, this was a spotlight of Web3, a weekly podcast hosted by Hobby Incubator, the incubation arm of Hobby Global. Uh, thank you, everyone, Flemmy, Chloe, Josh. Uh, if anybody have um, have seen the project for the first time, uh, please go ahead and like um, and and follow each other and uh, encouraging the discussion. Um, yeah, see you next time. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.